want the best interval workout, want to improve your VO2 max the most, do the Norwegian method. That's what all the influencers and podcasters tell us. That's what health longevity guru Brian Johnson does. Four by four minutes. It's the key. You don't need anything else. All right, stop listening. Okay, you know me. If you don't, get ready to. We're going to break it down. We're going to tear this apart. And I'm going to show you that four by four minutes is kind of a fine workout. It's okay. But there's nothing special about it. And the research around it has been misunderstood and miscommunicated. So let's start with the research itself. Let's go back to where the four by four minute came from. So there's a long history in running to doing similar workouts. Four by mile comes out to a little bit longer than four by four minutes for most college to elite athletes. For slower athletes, four by K or four by 1200 is a traditional workout. We have fartleks that are similar running back 100 years. It's okay. It's fine. But what happened is some Norwegian researchers in the 90s and into the 2000s started to test this workout in novices and moderately trained individuals to see, hey, can this improve their performance? This really got its jump when a bunch of researchers or a couple of researchers in Norway in 2007 published a, a paper that compared the four by four minute method versus three other styles of training. And we're going to break this study down because it's important here. So what were the styles of training? Okay, first we had the four by four minutes, which was four by four minutes at 90 to 95 percent heart rate max with three minutes of rest in between. Traditional workout. Okay, the other ones, long, slow distance. So they spent 45 minutes at about 70 percent of heart rate max. So a easy run. Second one, lactate threshold training. So they'd spend 24 minutes at 85% heart rate max. And then the fourth and final one, 15 on, 15 off, which is essentially repeating 15 hard, in this case, 90 to 95% heart rate, and 15 easy for, well, in the research, they repeated this 47 times. Okay. So very short interval, moderate interval, four by four minutes length. Longer locked egg threshold, steady, and then long and easy. And what the research showed is that after eight weeks where they repeated this training, each group repeated the training three times a week, the four by four minute group improved their VO2 max the most by, I think, a little over 7%. Next was the 15 on, 15 off, which was a little over 5%. And the lactate threshold and the long, easy runs had negligible effect. So no real increase in uh, VO2 max. Lactate threshold and running economy improved in all groups. So what's going on here? Do we get to declare 4x4 four four is the best? No. Because we have a couple problems here. Okay, and this is frequent in the research. First, there was no real performance standard. So no run a race, see what your maximum performance is. It was all physiological parameters, which is a problem because performance is often the best indicator of health longevity. And it's what most people care about. Okay. Second of all is in research, when we look at intervals, we have to essentially ma match the load. So lot match the volume intensity combination. Now, there's a number of different ways to do this. The researchers did it. One of the traditional ways here, looking at our heart rate, time spent, et cetera. But what we find here is when we match the load, it shifts us from how we typically do things in the real world. Why? Because no one's doing three times three 45-minute easy runs in the real world, comparing it to three hard sessions in the real world three hard workouts a week it's just not how it's done it divorces it from reality yes it isolates the variable but in isolating the variable it doesn't give us a sufficient stimulus to respond because it takes more easy running than it does comparatively 
hard workouts or meet more easy sessions than it does harder sessions. Third, and not to nitpick, but no one trains eight weeks in a row of the same workout over and over again, again divorced from reality. And then finally, the reasons that we see the four by four minute group increase VO2 max the most followed by 15 and 15 is that they're specific to that adaptation. If we look at VO2 max, what is it? Depending on the athlete, it's roughly running or training at around 3K pace or two mile pace, somewhere a little faster or slower, depending on the level of athlete. But that's the kind of pace that generally elicits the VO2 max response. What do we have? When we have four by four minutes, it's essentially 5K down to 3K pace, depending on the athlete. It's specific. If we compare that to 15 on, 15 off, what we realize is that is a traditional kind of Veronique Veronique Balot workout, which will elicit VO2 max because the pace is fast enough, okay, and the recovery is short enough where we stay at VO2 max for a significant length of time. Now, they probably could optimize this workout a little bit better by having them go harder because it's only 15 seconds. So one of the benefits of this workout is you don't stick at 5K pace or heart rate or what have you. You're able to go a little bit harder because it's only for 15 seconds. Okay. And you have equal recovery. So the point is, what does this research tell us? Specificity matters. If you want to train and target your VO2 max, you're best doing something specific. We've known this for a really long time, but what this training neglects is that everything around it contributes not only to your ability to do that workout, but your ability to perform holistically. This is why we periodize training. Okay. Now, if we look at the other research that has compared VO2 max, and there's been a lot that have looked for the optimal interval intensity to increase VO2 max, most of them suffer from the same problems. They compare four by four minutes to eight minute intervals to one minute intervals to 30 second intervals to variation of it. And what we find time and time again is that basically the specific, the one that is specific to the pace or effort that elicits VO2 max tends to do the best. Again, VO2 max elicited at about 3K pace. So what do you find? What Jack Daniels found 40, 50 years ago is that intervals that were two, three, four minutes in length at appropriate paces, again, 3K pace or so, did the best job. It's not rocket science. It's specificity. But here's the problem. When it comes to intervals, it's not just the pace that is specific, but the modulation of all the variables. So this is why the 15-15 workout worked almost as good, okay? Because if we manipulate the rest and the distance and the pace, we can elicit VO2 max, for example, or lactate threshold or whatever you want to call, whatever parameter you're after, depending on the mixture. For For instance, this is why Norwegian athletes like the Ingebrigtsens, often do some of their lactate threshold training with 400s. That's right, 400 repeats. Not long 20-minute sessions or tempos, 400s. Why? They take a page out of uh, the famed Hungarian coach, Mahali Igloy. Shorter intervals, not so fast, with really short recovery. So if you're doing 400s in, let's say, 70 seconds or 68 seconds with 30 seconds recovery, you can be at around lactate threshold for those guys. It's what swimmers do, right? Swimmers don't go, hey, I'm going to do 20 minutes at lactate threshold. They do sets of hundreds with short rest or 200s with short rest. How we manipulate the variables matter. And that gets me to the last point when it comes to this Norwegian method. Whenever you think there is a magical protocol, it's four by four minutes. That's it. Guys, don't change it. Everybody repeat it week after week after week. What happens and what we know is that we adapt to the stimulus applied. And we adapt in the direction that we apply that stimulus. 
So if we think the magic is in the protocol, four by four minutes with three or four minutes rest, depending on the protocol you subscribe to, what happens is our only avenue of adaptation is to run that workout faster. So I'm going to use distances instead of minutes because it makes it easier to understand this. But it's saying I'm going to go four by mile every week, sometimes two or three times a week, because that's what influencers do. Don't do that. Don't do it three times a week. Okay, back to on target. If I do four by mile with three minutes rest every week, first week, five minutes. I run them at five minute pace. The next week, 455. The next week, 454. Next week, 452. I'm getting a little faster. I'm going to stagnate at some point. Okay? It's just going to happen. Why? Well, my body's going to adapt in that direction. And then the kink in the pipe to get faster is going to change. This is why the magic is not in the, the protocol. It's how you manipulate that. What if instead of, hey, my only path is getting faster, I manipulate the variables. I say, I'm going to extend my endurance, my specific endurance. So instead of four by four minutes at five minute pace, I'm going to go four by 430 or four by five minutes or five minutes, five minutes, four minutes, four minutes for my intervals. What if I done that? I've challenged my body to adapt in the direction of extending my specific endurance. Same thing, I could reduce the rest. Instead of three minutes rest, I'm going to take 2.30 rest. What am I doing? I'm challenging my body, not in the pace or intensity that I'm running, but in my ability to recover and adapt in those two and a half to three minutes. Leads to a slightly different adaptation. Similarly, I could increase the speed or shift the speed. I could change the intervals. I could go... If I'm stuck and can't go faster, I might go from four by four minutes to six by three minutes. Why? Because I can run a little faster at three minute segments, which might, again, give me the stimulus to break through that kink in the pipe. I might need to go longer and a little bit slower. This is where you bring in other intensities. Why? Because that kink in the pipe might be my aerobic endurance. Alternatively, I might have to go faster and shorter for intervals before I come back to my VO2 max work. That's why we do speed training, to make that VO2 max work a little easier, to make that four by four minutes at five minute pace feel smoother and all the physiological underpinnings underneath. So here's the point. There is no magic protocol. There is no magic workout. There is no workout that will increase your VO2 max more than another. It's how you manipulate the workout to get the desired stimulus to give the adaptations. If you want to increase VO2 max, guess what? You're going to have to spend a lot of time at or around VO2 max. But guess what? If you just did that, you're not going to increase VO2 max to your maximum capacity because you're going to need a lot of easy running that provides the cardiovascular and aerobic physiology background, things like mitochondria density, things like aerobic enzyme utilization and aerobic enzyme quantities that allow us to maximize the stimulus when we train at that faster pace at VO2 max. Same with lactate threshold, same with anaerobic capacity, same with speed reserve. It all matters, it all intertwines. It's why training is simple, but also complicated. It's why I'm going to have a lot of videos and already have a lot of videos explaining the nuance of training. Because if it was simple, everybody would do the same thing, and they don't. So the bottom line is this. If someone tells you this is the best workout for X, Y, and Z, ignore it. It's not. Why? Because it depends on the stimulus that you're trying to elicit and how you manipulate the variables will change the stimulus. There's also individuality. Four by four minutes for someone like me, who's still at the age of 40 can run, I don't know, a 420 or maybe a little faster mile is going to be a different workout than someone who has four by four minutes whose best mile time is 630. The demands shift and change. Got to be aware of that. 
so again, the point is understand what you're trying to accomplish. Get the right stimulus for that. Going to have to experiment a little bit. And then manipulate the variables to progress in the manner that you desire or see fit. Sometimes that's going to be extending the interval. Sometimes it's going to be shortening the rest. Sometimes it's going to be getting a little faster. Sometimes it's going to be doing something completely different to get rid of that kink in the pipe or offer the support so you can do that quote unquote VO2 max workout better. So don't listen to people who tell you this is the key workout. And especially don't listen to people who tell you to repeat it over and over again for weeks and months on end. You've got to vary things up. This is exercise science 101. So let's bring it home by simplifying. If we actually want to increase VO2 max, if that is your goal for whatever reason it is, I'd also suggest you look at our VO2 max video that I did to see if that's the appropriate goal. For some, it is. For most, probably not. But anyways, if that was the case, what would you do? There's two paths here. What we need to do is provide a stimulus that causes our body to essentially be embarrassed in the direction to improve VO2 max. VO2 max, again, is more centrally limited than peripheral, although both play a role. So we need to pay attention to both of them, meaning central, cardiovascular, peripheral, more muscle, mitochondria in the muscle, etc. We need both. Let's not get lost in the weeds. But essentially, we have two paths. One is what I call the specificity path, which means we need to run at paces that elicit or get very close to putting us at VO2 max. So again, we ride that line of being at max for a longer period of time, which puts a stressor on our body to adapt in a positive direction. So for most pay people, this is running at about 3K pace, two mile pace. Uh, for novices, it's closer to mile pace. Why is that the case? Because of physiology, right? An advanced runner, 3K pace might be eight, nine, 10 minutes pace, which comes closer to mile pace and some other stuff we won't worry about. So anyways, around a pace that takes you around eight, nine, 10 minutes to complete. Okay. And the goal here is generally to increase the the pressure to adapt, which means that we want to extend or increase our reps so that we're spending more time providing that stimulus. So let me give you an example. If I ran a 3K all out uh, race, let's say it took uh, nine minutes for simple math, it would take a little bit of time to get up to VO2 max, aerobic system revved up, but then we're going to be up there for, I don't know, seven, eight minutes of it. Well, that's seven, eight minutes of stimulus. Again, it doesn't work exactly this way, but it's a good way to look at it. If instead I do, uh, let's say six by three minutes, what I've got is 18 minutes of total time during the thing. But of course, during the rest period, our VO2 goes down a little bit. But because we're not getting full rest, it comes back very quickly. So we're still probably getting, I don't know, 15, 16 minutes at or near VO2 max during that training period, that workout. So it's more of a stimulus. Again, it doesn't work exactly as spend more time at this, this thing and we adapt, but it's a good way to think about it. This is why we do interval training. That's method one. Now the key here, and this is important, why four by four minutes isn't the be all end all, is for some four by four minutes will be great. For others, they'll try and run four minute reps. Brian Johnson, a longevity guru who posted about his four by four minute reps, and as I tweeted about, is uh, he ran them where the first and especially the second rep were too fast and he was probably close to or over the pace that elicited VO2 max so that rep three and four, he couldn't get up to that intensity, fatigue one. So he's spending only one or two reps there. So four by four minutes, at least the way he paced it, not a good workout, backfires. So we want to choose workouts that allow us to meet the stimulus we need. In this case, for some, four by four minutes, great. For some, it'd be four by five minutes. For a lot, we'll need to work from what I call the bottom up, 
Meaning starting at 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. Or one minute on, one minute off. Or 90 seconds on, 60 seconds off. Two minutes on, 90 seconds off. Whatever it is. But that allows us to sustain that intensity successfully for enough reps where we get a stimulus. And then from there, it's changing the rest, reps, et cetera, to allow for that demand. Shorter rest actually allows us to spend more time at VO2 max if we withstand the fatigue. Why? Because when we hit that rep, our VO2 starts to go down, down. The longer the rep, the longer we're able to recover from it. It takes us a little bit of time to get back up. Shorter rep, this is why the 15 seconds on, 15 seconds off works because you get VO2 up, comes down just a touch, and it goes up, down a touch. Obviously, for longer reps, we can't do 15 seconds rep because the fatigue would get us and we wouldn't be able to complete the long rep. So this is balancing. The second path to do this is exactly what I just outlined there, which is what I call let the rest do its job, meaning an incomplete rest will eventually get you up to VO2 max because of uh, a combination of what we call the slow component of VO2. Don't worry about it. And, And just the physiology of recovery and oxygen demand. That again, don't worry about it. We cover some of it in the VO2 max at YouTube or in my book, The Science of Running. But what happens, let's take 30 seconds on, uh, 15 seconds off, or 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. What happens is during those 30 seconds, it's not long enough, that first rep, to get us up to VO2 max, right? We don't get all the way there because it takes about 90 seconds-ish for our aerobic system to get fully revved up. So we get partially a little way there, almost there. Then we take our recovery, but we don't, our v, our oxygen consumption doesn't come back to zero, it only drops a little bit. So we start the second rep and we're almost, our oxygen consumption is already elevated. So that means by the second rep, VO2 goes up again. Third rep, probably at max. And then with the short rest, we let that kind of keep us stay near max because our VO2 doesn't come down much during rest. What does this allow you to do? It allows you to run a little bit faster because the rep length is shorter and accumulate a higher load of time spent because the during the rest, you don't come down as much in terms of VO2, so you stay elevated. So you can either run a little bit faster or run, again, the same kind of 3K pace, but extend it for a longer period of time without kind of the stress. This is what I'd call the swimming model because they do a lot of stuff with uh, short rest, short reps. I will say the difference between swimming and running is that you can't recover quite as quick. So don't copy swimming workouts exactly because we're fighting against gravity and some other things, the pounding, etc., which means that we can't handle sh- really short rest. With the exception of 100 meter repeats, again, 15 second repeats, Anything longer, you got to have at least basically 30 seconds or more rest or else it's like you're not having rest whatsoever. So those are the two pathways to do it. Either specificity or use the rest to keep the aerobic demand elevated during the short rep. That's the path. And I'll just end with this. Hopefully from that example, you'll tell that four by four minutes, five by three minutes, Six by two minutes, eight by two minutes, 10 by 90 seconds. There is no differentiation. Someone's going to tell you one, one increases VO2 max more than other bullshit. There's no studies that compare it because of the nature of constraints of studying. In fact, I don't think there's any studies that compare very similar workouts. What we see is comparison of workouts of different types, meaning a 3K, 5K pace one and a 10K or half marathon pace versus very short suite. Very few studies compare actual demands, similar workouts, meaning we're tweaking the thing like we would go four by four versus five by three because there's no real differentiation. Okay. So there you go. Don't fall for the magic workout. There is none. 
I think it's freeing because it allows you to be an artist and you get to vary the stimulus to keep progressing in the direction that you want to. All the best. Subscribe. Check out my newest book. Sign up for my free newsletter. Appreciate you guys watching. Leave comments on what you like cover. I'm a science and running nerd, so I'll cover it all the best that I can. Take care.